Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about the third of three installments relating angles to a circle. So if you recall, in the first uh, section, we talked about angles whose vertex is on the circle. In the second, we talked about angles whose vertices uh, were inside of the circle, but not at the center. And in this particular installment, we're going to talk about uh, angles whose vertex is outside of the circle. Uh, and there are three different types of those angles. So let's start with the first one. All right, so angles with vertices outside of a circle. Uh, first is a secant secant angle. So secant secant angle is an angle whose vertex is again outside a circle and whose sides are determined by two secants. So I have secant one here and then again secant two here. And if I were to label these, I could say that one secant is going to be AC and the other is going to be AB. All right, so angle formed outside of the circle, two secants. Second is a secant and a tangent. So secant tangent angle is an angle whose vertex is outside the circle again, and whose sides are determined by a secant and a tangent. So I have my tangent here, this is the tangent segment, AC, and then my secant AB. And so I have an angle formed CAB, uh, that's the secant tangent angle. And my third possibility, you guessed it, was a tangent tangent angle. Going back to my ice cream cone theorem, remember the two tangent theorem where uh, the length of AB is going to be equal to the length of AC. So I have two tangents, tangent tangent angle is formed by two tangents, BAC would be my tangent tangent angle. Now let's talk about the characteristics of a tangent tangent angle. Uh, which brings us to theorem 88, and it says the measure of an angle whose vertex lies outside of a circle, so I have a secant, 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 tangent, or a tangent, tangent, is going to be one half of the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. So I can say the measure of angle E, or AEB, is going to be one half of the measure of CD minus uh, the measure of AB. So one half of the measure of CD minus AB. So let's go ahead and prove how we get to that, because you don't want to just take my word for it. Um, and so we're going to prove first a secant secant angle. So I want to prove that the measure of angle AEB, so AEB, this is angle 3, is going to be equal to one half the measure of CD, arc CD, minus the measure of arc AB. So that's the proof. So I'm going to say again, we're going to deal with exterior angles, the sum of the exterior angles, I'm sorry, the sum of the remote interior angles equals the exterior angle. So I have my exterior angle 1 is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles 3 and 2. I can use subtraction algebra to determine that the measure of angle 3, so if I subtract 2 from both sides, I get the measure of angle 3 now is equal to the measure of angle 1 minus the measure of angle 2. Well, I know the measure of angle 1, it's an inscribed angle, is going to be half the measure of its intercepted arc CD. And I know that the measure of angle 2 is going to be one half of its intercepted arc AB. So let's just draw this in pen to help you visualize maybe a little bit better. So I have CD here, it's the intercepted arc, and that's going to be the measure of angle one, is going to be one half the measure of uh, CD, and then the measure of angle two is going to be one half of the measure of, and let's draw this in here, the measure of angle 2 is one half the measure of the intercepted arc AB. So if the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 1 minus the measure of angle 2, then I can say that the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 1, which is one half CD, minus the measure of angle 2, which is one half BD, or I'm sorry, AB, and that gives us the measure of angle 3 is equal to one half the measure of CD minus AB. All right, next would be a secant tangent angle. And so we're going to say that the measure, what we're trying to prove is the measure of angle A, uh, again, is equal to one half the measure of BC <clears throat> minus BD. So angle A here, or angle three, is going to be equal to the measure, one half the measure of angle BC. And let's put this in blue here for you. Measure of BC minus the measure of BD, which we'll put in red. 
and that's going to be equal to the measure of angle A, which we'll put here in dark, and that's going to be angle 3. Okay, so the measure of angle A, what we're trying to prove, is equal to half the measure of BC minus half the measure of BD. All right, so I can say the measure of angle 1 here, the measure of angle 1 is going to be equal to the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. So I have my exterior angle is equal to the sum of my two remote interior angles, angle 2 and angle 3. I can use algebra and subtraction to determine that angle 3, if I subtract 2 from both sides, uh, I can get, I'm sorry, if I subtract 2 from both sides, I get the measure of angle 1 minus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3. Had a little typo there, which I had to correct. Uh, so we determined the measure of angle 2, which is an inscribed angle, uh, is going to be uh, half of the measure of angle BD. And then I have another inscribed angle for angle 1. It's equal, equal to half the measure of its intercepted arc, or BC. And I know that the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 1, which is going to be uh, BC. <clears throat> measure of angle 1, which is 1 half the measure of angle BC, minus the measure of angle 2, which is 1 half the measure of BD. So the measure of angle 3 equals 1 half the measure of BC minus the measure of BD, and that's what we were looking for originally for our uh, proof. All right, now moving on to what I believe is the last one, where we have a tangent tangent uh, angle. So we're trying to prove that angle BAC here is equal to one half the measure of arc intercepted arc BXC minus the measure of BC. So let's go ahead again and draw or highlight uh, BXC in blue. This might take a while, and I have to be very steady with my hand as I move around the circle and remember the major arc here, BXC and then BC is my minor arc. Let's go ahead and identify these in color, BC and then BXC and then angle BAC will be in black and then we can talk about how we're going to prove this particular theorem for tangent tangent angles. Okay, so measure of BAC is equal to one half the measure of BXC minus one half the measure of BC. I can say that the measure of angle BAC then is going to be equal to the measure of angle one here uh, plus the measure of angle two. So I define angle one as uh, angle BAY and the measure of angle two is the measure of angle YAC. Well, the measure of angle 1 is going to be equal to 1 half the measure of BX minus BY. Right? So we've determined that <clears throat> from a prior uh, slide here where we were talking about the tangent uh, secant angle. So we we've already proven that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of 1 half the measure of BX minus BY. So in our tangent secant Analysis for theorem 88, we've proven that. And also by the same fashion, we know that angle measure of angle 2 is equal to 1 half the measure of xc minus yc. So I know that the measure of angle 1 plus 2 is going to be the measure of these two added together. So I'm going to write them one on top of the other. One, a measure of angle 1, 1 half measure of bx minus 1 half measure of by. And then I'm going to add 2 measure of angle 2, which is 1 half the measure of xc minus one half measure of yc. And so one half the measure of bx plus one half the measure of xc gives me one half the measure of bxc, or my blue uh, intercepted arc. And I'm going to subtract one half the measure of by plus one half the measure of yc, and that gives me one half the measure of byc, and that's what I'm looking for. So I can see here that measure of angle bac, which is one plus two, is equal to one half the measure of bxc, minus one half the measure of B, Y, C. Okay, so just as a recap as we go through, uh, we're gonna talk about the different types of angles, but not go through their proofs. So I have uh, three types of angles, angles whose vertex, actually four, 
Uh, we didn't talk about uh, angles whose vertex is at the center of the circle. That's going to be a central angle, and that angle measure is going to be equal to the uh, intercepted arc uh, itself. So it's a one-to-one -one re relationship. Angles uh, whose vertex is on the center. So remember, we talked about inscribed angles, and we talked about tangent chord angles. And remember, we said that those angles were going to be half the measure of the intercepted arc. And then we talked about uh, angles whose uh, vertex was inside of the circle. And those are going to be our chord chord angles. And remember, we said the chord chord angle was going to be one half the sum of the intercepted arcs. So I have the two intercepted arcs, and this angle measure is one half the sum of these two intercepted arcs. And then finally, we had angles whose vertices were going to be outside of the circle. And we had a secant secant angle. We had the tan secant tangent angle. And finally, the tangent tangent angle. And remember, we said that the uh, measure of those angles that are formed outside of the circle are going to be one half of the difference of the intercepted arcs. All right, we've got a lot of practice problems to review, probably handle it in a couple sections. So please come and join us to learn a little bit more about angles related to a circle and their application to different problems.